So apart from your basic RF interference that comes around there, let's look at the dreaded ground loop hum. Have you ever heard a hum like this? So chances are it's being generated by a ground loop. But before we get into that, let's actually understand what ground actually is. We can break ground into electrical ground and signal ground. Electrical ground is the third pin on most electrical cables that connects to actual earth ground. When you plug this into a wall, the other end of this goes into a stake that is driven deep down into the dirt, literally in the ground. Now, electricity wants to go to ground, right? So let's imagine you stuck your tongue into a toaster, which I highly dis discourage you from doing, right? That electri electricity is gonna find a great path through you through to the ground you stand on and you'll be waving hide and nana on the way to the light, okay? So most electrical appliances have a ground so that in the event of some wiring problems inside the unit touching the metal chassis, the electrical current will immediately go down this ground wire and trip a circuit breaker instead of you, instead of going through, through you. It's for this reason that any electrical device that has a ground on its cable and the end of its cable like this has been placed there for a reason. Don't go chopping off this pin and trying to get rid of ground loops. So that's electrical grounds. Signal grounds is the return path for the low level audio signals that are making their way through, uh, through your sound system. So let's see if, if some visuals here can make this a little bit more clear. Let's imagine we have a keyboard and a mixer and both of them are plugged into the AC outlets and two separate AC outlets. Uh, you'll notice that uh, on those AC uh, plugs that are plugged in those outlets, I've designated the ground in green right here. So you can see that right in there. That is the ground pin, which basically connects both of these to the, the ground through those AC plugs. Now we're, in addition to them needing power, we're gonna be plugging our keyboard into our mixer using a DI box. As we said, said before, we're gonna take an unbalanced line on coming from the keyboard into the DI box, and the DI box will turn that into a balanced line and take that through to the mixer. Now here's the problem. Both of those devices are plugged into separate wall outlets. Maybe there are, you know, one's on one end of the room, one's on the other end of the room. And that brings up a problem because you can have potential differences between those grounds. And now your keyboard has basically two paths to ground, uh, through the DI box and then also through its ground pin and the same thing with the, uh, with the mixer. And so this is gonna give you a perfect condition for a ground loop and it'll sound like this. The best way to break that loop is to go into the output of that DI box and you'll notice that on a lot of DI boxes you'll have a little ground lift there. If you click on that, poof, that will go away and your ground loop will go away as well. So that problem is completely fixed. Now there might be another way that you might think about how to fix this. Maybe you get the bright idea and you're going to look at the pin down here on your a mixer and you're going to break that using something like this which is a ground lifter. It basically turns a three prong AC plug into a two prong AC plug and completely lifts that. And so if you do that, let that go, guess what? That'll probably get rid of your ground loop but here's the problem. That mixer now has no power ground. In other words, if anything were to go wrong inside that mixer, and something live within that mixer in terms of you know, a, a high voltage line were to touch that chassis, it would have no place to go to uh, power ground. And if you snuck up next to that and touched that, you'd be toast. Now, I'm not suggesting that a world-class mixer like this is, is likely to have faulty wiring, but the manufacturers put those ground pins uh, there for a reason chopping off pins or using ground lifters you know uh, as your first resort to trying to fix a ground loop is really not a good plan so let's look at the three solutions to fixing your ground loop problems probably the easiest way to go uh, is just using the ground lift on a di box like we said before most di boxes will have that and that will fix a lot of those problems uh, if not you can always share 
the same AC outlet for say in this case the keyboard and the mixer. If they share the same AC outlet, they have the same ground and then that will alleviate a lot of those problems. Um, if you have your mixer and your uh, speakers and your amps a long distance away from each other so they actually can't uh, share the same AC outlet and you want to isolate them from each other in terms of ground, an isolation transformer is a great way to go. One last place that you might encounter hum is from transformers. If you have power supplies like this anywhere near your uh, audio lines, experiment with moving them in terms of their proximity to the audio lines. Uh, if you can't get them completely away from the audio lines, maybe try you know, changing their axis and that can, that can normally fix uh, that problem. Years ago, when I was just starting out in the, in the business, I was really into making racks of equipment really really, really tidy, right? Right down to looming all the cables together with cable ties and putting them neatly in cable troughs and Velcroing all the bits and pieces and tacking them away. So for weeks, I had this annoying hum in my system that I couldn't track down. It ended up being a power supply like this that I had Velcroed right close to the output of one of the signal processors. As soon as I broke that Velcro away and moved that power supply around, it sounded like a, a lightsaber battle, right? That kind of sound. I just moved that power supply out of the way, you know, and after that, all was good. So, let's talk about phase. I've said many times that audio is just waves of sound energy that have uh, uh, both peaks and troughs.